Uh, hi everyone, Cokethany Boy Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Pusha T album, It's Almost Dry. Yeah, this is a brand new LP from Coke Rap, Kingpin, Good Music President, uh, one half of the legendary duo Clips, Mr. Pusha T. I was pretty psyched for this new record for a number of reasons. This thing touted a lot of production from Pharrell Williams as well as Kanye West, which how could you go wrong with that? Especially with Kanye having produced Pusha's last album, Daytona, and that record was so damn good, one of the most celebrated hip hop albums of the last decade. And Pharrell and Push obviously have a lot of history, going back to those days of clips. And while Push has certainly proven over the years that he can rap over just about anything, there is something special about the chemistry that is created with him over a Pharrell beat or a Neptune's beat. And another reason to be excited for this project is Pusha himself has come such a long way since the days of Lord Willen and Hell Hath No Fury. When him and his brother went separate ways, Pusha's initial attempts at transitioning into a solo career were a bit rough. Like 2013's My Name Is My Name had just about as many lows as it did incredible highs. But Push's consistency across an entire album seemingly has improved as the years have drawn on, coming to a head several years ago with his last project, Daytona. And I was kind of hoping for something in a similar realm of consistency with It's Almost Dry. Which, after having heard it, I do think it is one of his best records so far, even if the flow is a little choppy. Because switching back and forth from Ye to Pharrell production uh, doesn't exactly make for the most cohesive listen. Even that song here me clearly off that record brought together by Bathing Apes Nego that dropped earlier this year, that made it onto It's Almost Dry too. And it is a track I do appreciate. It's certainly more barred up than the initial single to this entire thing, Diet Coke. Classic push for sure, but the beat is easily one of the weakest here. Uh, also, the track does kind of end somewhat unceremoniously with it just fading into the ether all of a sudden. Some of the features on this thing are just okay as well, or maybe just not really all that complimentary to Pusha T and his sound. Kid Cudi's chorus on rock and roll, for example, is strained as hell, far from his best vocal performance. And Kanye's performance on his sung verse is smoother, but not by much. However, Ye does provide a bit of a mini narrative on this record with his verses here, uh, referencing what he's going through currently with his divorce. He also goes into this a bit on the end of Dreamin' of the Past, where he mentions uh, the, the family being in danger when daddy's not home, which is frankly a little controlling, but uh... But yeah, the best thing rock and roll has to offer are these chipmunk soul chops and Push's opening verse. Pretty much everything about it uh, outside of that I could take or leave. And as long as I'm complaining, I'll mention the track Scrape It Off, which features Don Tolliver as well as Lil Uzi Vert, who I think stylistically and lyrically are not the, you know, best fit with Push, especially with cringy throwaway lines like, uh, man, my buzz light like Woody. Don Tolliver himself vocally is fine. I guess I'm just starting to feel more and more cold to the one single delivery that he pretty much hits every feature that he does with. It's getting a little stale. The bassy mystical beat, I suppose, is nice, and while Pusha on the back end of the song is fine, uh, it does take a while to get to that point, and I wouldn't really put this verse in, like, a top five list of lyrical moments on this record, for sure. I guess for Pusha, I just expect better, considering how little records he puts out, how long it takes to make an album. And this one over here is also pretty short, it's trim it just uh, 35 minutes or so, so not a lot of wiggle room to drop cuts that are just mid. Now, thankfully, the rest of the material on this thing is pretty strong to one degree or another. The opening track, Brambleton, the eerie keys and bassy beat on this one are classic Pharrell, and they've set a perfect tone for Push to rap about the treacherous memories of a dealer's past. Friend shot to death, feds watching, cutting deals, cop and quarter pounds from the border towns, also a reminder to the listeners that the names involved are concealed. Push also hits the mic on this track with this kind of deep smoky flow that's almost reminiscent of Rick Ross in some pockets, and I would say this delivery fits him pretty well. Then there's Let the Smokers Shine the Coops, which, <laughs> holy shit, this one's insane. Like, is this track not a top 10 Pharrell beat? The howling tones and horn samples are fantastic, beat is tight as fuck, it's aggressive, hits hard, but there's also something that's really dance floor friendly about it too. Pusha matches this energy perfectly, especially with the mention of having gotten the goose, and he's Jim Perdue. Also so Cocaine's Dr. Seuss. This track doesn't feature one of his most dynamic flows and verses, or uh, densest verses either, but I will say on this track, Push and Pharrell do 
come together into something that is greater than the sum of its parts. They just align in such a way where neither of them needs to go too crazy with what they're doing because it just comes together into something that is just uh, so great. Each person just brings what they bring and it just adds up. Like if you're looking for lyrics on lyrics on lyrics, head to the next track, Dreaming of the Past. Like on this bar where he rhymes Krampin with on bikes like Amblin. From here, we have a lot of hilarious flexes throughout the track that show how funny and expressive Pusha T can be. Uh, also this one line where he's talking about trying to get the dope through in your sister? That's fucked up. That's fucked up, dude. But yeah, he keeps piling it on on this track, not to mention uh, the amazing sample of John Lennon's Jealous Guy. It goes over very well and leaves the entire track feeling really uh, glamorous and sentimental. Neck and Wrist featuring Jay-Z also has a very chilling Pharrell beat attached to it. I absolutely love hearing Push hit this beat with a flow that uh, is constantly approaching this like crack in his voice and then he kind of descends from there over and over. Jay-Z matching that energy in his own way, hitting those cracked inflection points but sounding weirdly emotional too and just approaching it with an entirely different flow. But yeah, from the verses to some of Pharrell's refrains and the beat, the whole track is just intoxicating as hell. Things somehow get even more haunting on the song Just So You Remember. There's the very generous Colonel Bagshot sample that's uh, pretty much carrying the entire track with the vocal and bass with some additional drums thrown in for some uh, bump. There's something kind of stripped back and simple about this song too, just like uh, many of the songs that Ye produced for Pusha on Daytona. And of course, lyrically, Pusha is as deep as he can possibly be in that coke talk. Really doing it like he's got something to prove, especially with bars like The Book of Blow, Just Know I'm the Genesis. Now, from here we have the second half of the record, which in my opinion is not as strong as the first. The first half of this thing, in my opinion, is some of the best stuff Pusha T has ever put out. Even the song Diet Coke, with it not being as lyrically dense as some other songs I do prefer here, has grown on me with repeated listens. But even if the second half is not as consistent as the first, there are still some major highlights here, I'd say. There's Call My Bluff, which also features a Pharrell beat, the nonchalant flows and limply sung chorus and all the coke talk really kind of adds together into that classic clips magic, but with a bit more of a menacing tone to it. The song Open Air, also a little chilling and uh, is all about moving, moving weight, big amounts of, of weight, lots of like talk of, you know, move, moving coke, uh, <laughs> boats, plane, everything, long and large distances. That one is pretty fun. And then there's the closer I Pray For You, uh, featuring Pusha's brother Malice, who, uh, you know, it's, it's very unfortunate that uh, Clips did not stay together as a duo, but as of late here and there, they have been bringing that classic uh, energy and chemistry back, and that is certainly the case on this new track too. And they sound fantastic doing it, especially over this instrumental that is so grand and beautiful and stunning and pretty, has a lot of gospel influence laced into it, and the labyrinth uh, sung chorus is is beautiful as well. But yeah, even though a full clips record is most likely not in the works, especially with Malice having made the faith-based shift that he has over the years, it's still amazing to hear that that brotherly and artistic rapport is still there. And Malice is uh, to this day writing like a madman with raps about the distance from which he has to the lifestyle he once lived. Uh, Tell me what I missed, new designer drugs and emotions I don't get. I know Hellcat still paddle when I shift, Vietnam flashbacks, I get triggered by a sniff. <sighs> it's a good closer. It's a very good closer to an album that I think generally is, is very good as well, even if with my biggest gripe here being uh, that the second half is just not as strong as the first. Overall, it's almost dry, is not as consistent as Daytona, but really how could it be with the consistent Yay production and it being so small and short and tight and trim as it was? It's almost dry is big bigger, it's longer, and there are some positives to that because I think there are moments here where Pusha gets a bit more ambitious. There are moments here where hearing him team up so thoroughly with Pharrell once again just is incredible and results in some of his best songs in years. So to a degree at least, Pusha T still having those consistency problems, those cohesion problems across the length of an entire album. But still, that doesn't take away entirely from the fact that uh, there are some incredible songs here incredible vocal and lyrical performances. Pusha T continues to prove to this day that he is a, a one-of-a-kind rapper. And uh, even if his next project has a few flaws on it and runs just like 20 minutes and, and it takes four years to put out, it's, it's still very much... <laughs> 
<laughs> going to be well worth the wait because of the uh, amount of personality and talent that he brings to each record. I'm feeling a light to decent eight on this one. Transition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, push a T. It's almost dry forever.